Hey, welcome to my daily devotions for Monday, October 3rd, 2022. We're going to take a look at 1 Corinthians 8, <clears throat> Acts chapter 3, Psalm 136, and Job chapter 10. Let's pray before we look at the word. Father, speak to us today. Uh, get our day started off right by hearing you speak to us through your word and then crawl inside us with the power of the Holy Spirit according to the truth of your word and change us from the inside out, Father. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now about food sacrificed to idols. We know that we all possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. There's a mouthful right there, okay? The man who thinks he knows something does not yet know as he ought to know. But the man who loves God is known by God. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols. We know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods, that's for the little g, and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came, and for whom we live, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. Wow, that's great, great theology there because it's the truth from God's word. But not everyone knows this. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat such food, they think of, they think of it as having been sacrificed to an idol since their conscience is weak. It is defiled. But food does not bring us near to God. We are... We are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your freedom does not become a stumbling block to the weak. I've always got to think about what we do and has, how it has an effect on others. Verse 10, For if anyone with a weak conscience sees you who have this knowledge eating in an idol's temple, won't he be emboldened to eat what has been sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against your brother in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause him to fall. We need to think about what we do and how it affects other people. Let's look at Acts chapter 3 as we make our way through the wonderful book of Acts. The, uh, has, what an impact they, those guys had on the world. They took the gospel to the world. They, they, they uh, did what Jesus told them to do. Verse chapter 3. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. <clears throat> they did midday prayers. Unbelievable. Great. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking, jumping, and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging in the temple, a temple gate called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we, made, we, made, we, have, we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know has been made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given him complete healing, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. 
But this is how God fulfilled what he had uh, foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. So repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send Christ who has been appointed to you, even Jesus. He must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, <clears throat> the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to him. You, you, you must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from among his people. Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel, Samuel on, as many as have spoken, have foretold these days. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenants. God, covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, though your offspring, through your offspring, all peoples of the earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Then, Psalm 136. All I have to do is to get the page to cooperate with me. Psalm 136. Right now, it's not cooperating. There we go. Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, this goes through the attributes of God and then affirms that his love affir that his love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever who brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever, and brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led the people through the desert, his love endures forever. Who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. Who killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever. An inheritance, an inheritance to his servant Israel, his love endures forever. To the one who remembered us in our lowest state, his love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. And who gives food to every creature, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. It does a great summary of how God cares about us. Amazing. And his love endures forever. Job chapter 10. Job chapter 10. I think Job is still talking here, as I recall. In response to Bildad the Shuite. And now Job is still talking to Bildad the Shuite. I loathe my very life. Therefore, I will give free rein to my complaint and speak out in bitterness of soul. He's saying, I'm in a bad way, and I'm going to tell you exactly why, and I'm going to express it. I will say to God, do not condemn me, but tell me what charges you have against me. Does it please you to oppress me? <clears throat> One of the lessons, again, we learn from Job is if you feel a certain way about something, tell God he can take it. And he'll, he'll be the one who will help you or in, in his time, you know. Does it please you to oppress me, to spurn the work of your hands while you smile on the schemes of the wicked? Do you have eyes of flesh? Do you see as mortal sees? Are your days like those of a mortal or your ears like, years like those of a man that you must search out my faults and probe after my sin, though you know that I am not guilty and that no one can rescue me from your hand? Your hands shaped me and made me. Will you now turn and destroy me? <clears throat> Remember that you molded me like clay. Will you now turn me to dust again? Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese? 
clothed me with skin and flesh and knit me together with bones and sinews. You gave me life and showed me kindness and in your providence watched over my spirit. <clears throat> but this is what, the, what you concealed in your heart. I know that this was in your mind. I, if I sinned, you would be watching me. Would you not let my offense go unpunished? If I am guilty, woe to me. Even if I am innocent, I cannot lift my head. For I am full of shame and drowned in my afflictions. I hold my head high. You, you stalk me like a lion and again display your awesome power against me. You bring new witnesses against me and increase your anger toward me. <clears throat> your forces come against me wave upon wave. Why then did you bring me out of the womb? I wish I had died before any eyes saw me. God, he's just telling God, I'm wounded, man. I, I'm, I, why did you let me even be born? That's how bad he felt. If only I had never come into being or had been carried straight from the womb to the grave. Are, are not my few days almost over? Turn away from me so that I have a moment of joy. Therefore, I go to the place of no return, to the land of gloom and deep salt shadow, <clears throat> to the land of deepest night, of deep shadow and disorder, where even the light, where even light is like darkness. The lesson of Job. You're hurting? Tell God exactly how you hurt. Tell him how you feel. Don't hold back. He can take it. Hope you will subscribe to my channel, do all that stuff, hit the like. Send this on to other people. Help me get this out to as many people as I can. Bless you. Have a great day. Let's pray again. Father, thanks for speaking to us. Give us wisdom from your word. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit so we can live out what you said. And bless this day, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.